Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for a day like this. Uh, we want to say God should be glorified for another edition of um, Let's Talk. Mm. Let's Talk is a program that um, mm. God has asked us to start some few, some few months ago where we come to speak to the public or that God has uh, taught us or that is teaching us in our secret place, in our bed chambers. So, and we are sure that when the Holy Spirit expounds God's word to us, we know it better, we understand it better. And where His word is, many things happen. We experience freedom, we experience enlightenment, we experience deliverance. In fact, our lives are transformed. So, this edition will be a life transforming edition in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you are welcome to Let's Talk. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> when you said a few months, okay, it made me smile. Okay. <laughs> and why is that so? Because it's been more than, it's not a few months. <laughs> okay. For years. Okay. Although okay. we didn't know how to go about it, we tried going on TV, we tried all those things. Yes. And those things took some time yeah yeah being introduced someone through someone and all the lot but it was just not working oh yeah oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. but god but god god knew what he was doing yes he was preparing a platform mm -hmm. where you can come and share what he has taught you in your closet mm -hmm. hallelujah amen yeah <laughs> he removed the stone at the right time mm -hmm. the and stone oh yes that needed to be removed like when they had buried Jesus and the women were saying, how will we be able to get to the body? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. Mm, after the burial. Yeah. In order to take care of the... And then they found out that the stone had been removed. Mm. You know, many a times mm. we assume the invisible the invisible stone. You know, we, we, we presume that, uh, you know, we think that um, the stone is still there. We, we think that the hindrance is still there. Mm. But meanwhile, God has removed the hindrance. Mm. You That's are watching, so yeah, it was somebody, you are watching this program and you are thinking, I want to take a very big step, a very big step, and you are thinking there are possible hindrances uh, along your way. Mm. We have a good news for you. The stone has been removed you just take steps and begin to do what god says you to do mm. walk in his direction mm. and as you walk in the direction you will discover that mm. the stone is no more there mm. god has made a way mm. and you, do you know that even uh, some few minutes ago i was hearing the song he you know he makes he makes a way mm. he has made a way so god has made a way for you mm. he was the one that made a way in the red sea jordan parted mm. so jordan parted Jericho walls collapse. He has made it way for you to receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. To even portray that point, also, what came to my mind was the story of the lepers. Okay. That were saying that if we go to the enemy's camp, oh, yes. They will either kill us mm -hmm. or they will give us something to eat. Definitely. Not knowing that the enemies had heard a noise in the, in the night mm. or they had heard some noise. Okay. And they had all escaped with their lives. Mm, mm. So by the time the four lepers came to the utmost parts of the camp, mm -hmm. they found out that there was nobody there. And everything was just there. All the possessions, all their tents, all their silver, all their gold, all their food was just lying around with no owner. Mm. So they were able to be even first partakers of the fruit. Mm. So, if they hadn't taken action, they wouldn't have seen that. They would have still continued to lament like those that were in the city that were lamenting that there is no food. Hmm. And interestingly, in that story, the tent that the enemies were occupying hmm. became empty. Hmm. And they left an empty tent. Hmm. So, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a word to learn from. That's even where we think that you know, the devil is operating from and his agents against our journey of life. Mm. God has fought our battles for us. Mm. The enemies are no more there. So it is time to move on, to move forward, because mm. the enemies, 
that we have seen before now, they are no more there. They are no more there. So let us step into the camp of the enemy. Let's take that giant stride, giant step, and begin to possess what belongs to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we are continuing today on Should Christians Drink? It's from the series Prove All Things, Hold Fast to What is Good, which is taken from the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5.21. And we also included another scripture there, which is Acts 17, 10 to 11, that talks about the Berean Christians, yeah. that whenever they heard anything that Paul said, they would go and check for themselves and then come back and um, tell him that they have also searched and they have seen that it's true, that whatever he was teaching them was true, was the truth. So they accepted that. And Paul didn't say, why are you trying to prove whether I'm telling the truth or not? He didn't <laughs> query them for that. He even, what did he do? He even commended them. Yeah. Yeah. That they are more noble than their brethren that are in Thessalonica. Yeah. Maybe that's why Paul had to tell the people of Thessalonians, mm -hmm. prove all things and hold fast. Mm. I think uh, I think you know they had a, a, a they had a weakness. Mm. The at Thessalonian Christians they had a weakness. They just receive anything. Mm. You know they 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 love the Lord sincerely speaking. Mm. They were zealous for the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, they were born again, they had genuine experience of salvation, mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. serving the Lord, giving mm -hmm. to the Lord, and so mm -hmm. on, supporting Apostle Paul, but they had a weakness. They, they were not used to proving all things. Mm -hmm. So he had to repeat, look, brethren, prove all things, and hold fast to that which is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. prove all things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are continuing that series today. Should Christians drink? On the yardsticks that we are using, we are using Jesus' words and his lifestyle. And we talked about Hebrews 12 too, talking about the covenant that even Jesus Christ came to give us also, that the law came by Moses and that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's John 1, 16 and 17. And then Ephesians 2, 19 to 21, mm -hmm. that also talks about the apostles and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, yeah. the foundation that is built. Thank you, Lord. So that whatever we want to discuss, whatever we want to prove, we need to have these yardsticks yeah. in order to prove them. These are our own yardsticks that we are using here. Okay, I, I think I can, I can read. I can Ephesians. Read. Ephesians 2, 19 to 20. 22. Okay, 22. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and sojourners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and have built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. 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 So we are using the yardstick of Jesus Christ himself, as we have said. Mm. We are also using the apostles' doctrine and the prophets, which is still from Ephesians 2, 19 to 21. Then Acts 2.42 also that still talks about the apostles' doctrine, which we are supposed to build upon. And 1 Corinthians 13.1 that also talks about Paul himself saying at the mouth of two or three witnesses, which mm. we can say are two or three scriptures. We use two or three scriptures to prove anything, whether it is true or false. And then we also are also adding to that yardstick even the historical background. Why are we doing this? Because we learn from history so that yes. we don't repeat the errors mm. and build on the positives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We learn 
we also learned that some of these commandments were also based on tackling some localized pressing issues. Oh yes. That's why they had to raise some of these mm. issues, some of these commandments that they raised in the Bible. Mm. So that's why we are also looking at the historical background. Mm. That is wherever it is necessary mm. in order to understand fully what we are really dealing with or looking at. Yeah. So yeah, we appreciate uh, Pastor Zion for joining us. God bless you, sir, for, for being part of this broadcast. We appreciate you. God bless you. Yeah. Then, so we are continuing today with Jesus. We have already discussed Jesus concerning wine in the first part, and we are just going to have to continue with that before we go on to looking at what the apostles thought about concerning wine, and drinking, and drunkenness. So Jesus spoke about wine in the Good Samaritan's parable. Yep. Luke 10, 30 to 36. Yeah, so we need to read that. Um, it's, an, it's an interesting um, story concerning loving um, our neighbors as ourselves. Luke chapter 10, we'll read through, and there are some things that we need to pick from there as the Holy Spirit helps us today. Luke 10, 30. 30 to 36. Okay, 30 to 36. Alright, I read from here. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Verse 32. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Verse 34. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him 35 Luke 10 35 and on the next day when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the innkeeper and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever you spend more when I come again I will repay you 36. Which now of these three think you was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. So Jesus used the parable here, a wise saying, and in that parable, he used wine. There was a mention of wine in that parable, but the wine that was used here was used in a medicinal way for the injured victim. Oh, yeah. We know that in Bible days, there were many cases where they used wine mm. as medicine to clean a wound and do different things like that. And even today, they still use alcohol oh, yes. in varying degrees for medicinal purposes. Mm. Let me just quickly run through some of those. Today, many products include alcohol hmm. like hand sanitizers yep. mouthwash cough syrups cold medicine etc hmm. and there are other products also that are not even medicinal like um windshield wiper fluid yeah honey buns vanilla extract that is used for cakes perfume cologne all these they have some degree of alcohol in them so to continue now concerning Luke 10 30 to 36 Jesus used this mm. and today we can look at wine and oil as the Holy Spirit that was a type for the Holy Spirit the, oh, yes. the Holy Spirit that comforts that heals mm. Mm. So that was a type. So that's a type for us today. 
And then we want to look at it in the sense that when we see this man, I think it was the, it's not necessarily the religious mm. that help people. If we look at this particular uh, chapter, oh, yeah. we can see that the religious people, they came. Mm. We will think that they are the ones that will help. Mm. Mm. The Levites, mm. the priests, oh, yes. they came along by chance. By chance, and by chance, there came down a certain, it wasn't something that he had meditated upon. Mm, mm. By chance, it was an opportunity to oh, yes. show himself as a good neighbor. Mm. It wasn't a plan. It was like, it wasn't something that had been planned, but it was an opportunity mm -hmm. that they did not see. Oh, yes. An opportunity to do good. Mm hmm but they didn't see it like that. Mm. Maybe it was hurrying to the synagogue. <laughs> mm. Don't let this one bother me. Mm. Mm. And he took he continued his journey. Mm. Even in life, the journey of life, there are times when there will be opportunities open to us mm. whereby somebody needs help. Mm. That is a it's like um a do or die. I fear oh, yes. that that person, if you don't talk and minister to that person at that particular time, we have heard of testimonies whereby maybe the person said that they wanted to go and commit suicide or mm, something like that. Mm, mm. But because they had an opportunity maybe to hear the word or something like that, mm. they changed their mind. Mm, mm, mm. So this was an opportunity, but they didn't see it as opportun an, an, an opportunity to do good mm. to somebody, to a neighbor. Mm. The priest came. He saw the person injured. <laughs> what did he do? Mm. He just passed by, by on the other side. What do you think was going through his mind? Maybe I need to get to mm. that temple on time. People mm. are waiting for me. Mm. There are different kinds of excuses that he would have made mm. if you want to look at it deeply. Mm. Now, what was his excuse? This person is already dead. Don't let me waste my time. Mm. Mm. Or I can't be bothered to even take care of this person. Mm. I can't be bothered. Let somebody else mm. do it. That I'm not the only one going past this way. It's a common highway. Mm. Let somebody else take the responsibility. Mm. So those are the kind of things that would have been going through his mind. What about the Levite also? When the Levite was going, oh, I need to get there on time. I need to, ah, today they tied something. I need to do this. I need to do that. Mm. He came, even took time to come and look at him, to examine <laughs> him. <laughs> wow. Wow. He knew he was injured, that he needed help. Mm. But he too, he passed him by. These were religious people. Mm. People that said that they believed in God. And then a Samaritan, he too came along the same way. Mm. And saw this person and knew that he, ha he needed help. And he was moved by compassion. That means he was moved by love. And where does love come? Love comes from God. Oh, yes. Many of us, we need to re-examine ourselves concerning love. Mm. Because if we look at unbelievers, many unbelievers out there, the way by which they show love, mm. you'll be shocked. And you'll mm. say, ah, but even among my own, they don't do like this. Mm. Now mm. how come they are so loving like that? Mm. And mm. we will say we, that they don't have God. Mm. 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 Now as you are talking... The Holy Ghost just put something in my mind concerning the Levites, the priests that just passed by. That God is more than able to raise help from an uncommon source for his, you know, for his children. Mm -hmm. You know, one would have expected that the Levites being religious, the mm -hmm. priests being religious, they had covenant with the God of Israel, mm -hmm. that they would have attended to this man. But God brought help from an unusual source. Mm. That's the word for somebody. Don't mm. says the Lord. Mm. I am bringing help to you Amen. from an unusual source 
by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of us, we are bitter because the Levites have passed us by. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Many of us, we are bitter because the priest, so-called priest, they have passed us by. Mm. But as long as we look unto God, mm. who is the primary source, mm. he will send our Samaritan across our ways. Amen. I see God sending your Samaritan to you from this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. God didn't allow that man to die. Mm. He made sure that despite the fact that mm. the so-called religious people mm. refuse to do what they need to do to help this man, mm. he sent a Samaritan mm. to help him. Mm. So help is on the way. Mm. In fact, help is now. Mm. Many of us, we have been frustrated mm. concerning those who we call many believers or Christians or those who have covenants with the God of Israel by the way we've been treated. Don't be bitter. Because if they had not passed by you, mm. if they have not passed you by, mm. if they have not neglected you, when God helps you, they will claim the glory. Mm. They say, if not for us, it will not be where he is. So, you know that sister, if not mm. for us, we, are, you know, we, we, we helped him. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, if not for us, she won't be where she is. We helped, we helped her. It happens, it happens even in churches. They claim the glory. However, God will not share his glory with anybody. That mm. is why some people must pass you by so that your Samaritan can manifest. So mm. stop being bitter. Mm. Look unto God, the owner of the heavens and the earth. It says, the Bible says, I will lift up my hands unto the hills. Mm. From where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, the one who has made the heavens and the earth. Mm. So he will not allow you to stumble. So your help is here. Yeah. Don't worry. The priests, they have done their worst. Mm. The levers have done their worst. But your Samaritan is here. Mm. To help you, Amen. to help me, Amen. to help my wife, help my family, Amen. help you know, help me, my calling, Amen. help me, my career, help me, my ministry, mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As you were talking, what the Holy Ghost brought up was a scripture: mm. "I will raise help from another quarter. Mm -hmm. I will raise help Thank from you, another Lord. quarter." Thank you. That's for somebody out there. I will raise help. From another quarter, in the name of Jesus. says the Lord, Amen. says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. So this man, he was a victim. This man was a victim. Mm. The Samaritan, uh, the the man that was injured, we don't even know his name. <laughs> because yeah. that stands for anybody that is injured today. That's mm. why the, the name is not important. Mm. Even the good Samaritan's name is not important. Mm. And the man that was injured's name was not important. The important thing is that he was injured. Mm. And the important thing is that he had a helper mm. that God raised up to help him. Thank you, Lord. He was half dead. And we can relate to that today that there are many thieves today who are taking possession of God's people. Mm. They are taking possession of their time. Hmm. They are taking possession of their money. Hmm. They are taking possession of their ability to think. Hmm. They are taking possession of their relationships with their children, with their spouse. Hmm. They are taking possession of their health. Hmm. They are taking possession of their assignments or destiny. They are taking possession of their personality. And cause them to bring forth fake fruit. Instead of redirecting them positively. Why do we say that? For example, maybe a person before he became a believer was somebody that talks a lot. Mm -hmm. 
that we'll call a uh, talkative. We will talk. Uh, <laughs> a talkative. But instead of redirecting the person and helping the person to maybe be, maybe that person is supposed to be somebody that is a, a speaker, mm -hmm. maybe a newscaster, somebody that uses his voice mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. speak. He can speak from morning to night. <laughs> Like a, parrot. Redirect, like a parrot. Redirects, <laughs> redirects the person so that he can use that gift for the glory of God. Mm. But no, they have turned such people, they have stolen that gift by saying that no, that person should stop and just keep quiet mm. and be mute and not speak at all. Meanwhile, he has the gift of being able to speak. Mm. It's an unusual unusual gift not that he just speaks anyhow but he can speak and that is what god has put in him so that he speaks more than anybody else he can speak and in order to redirect him maybe it's motivational or whatever it is yeah he has that gift mm. that could have been channeled right but instead of that that person has been killed hmm. concerning that ability that you need to now keep quiet. You know that you are now a Christian. Mm. You don't talk. Just be mute. Just be dumb. Mm. Mm. And so that person loses part of his personality or her personality. Maybe before that person came, the person loves to dress. Mm. Not in an immoral way, but loves to dress. But as soon as that person becomes a believer, you say, okay. <laughs> Don't dress like that anymore. Hmm. You need to dress in one particular way. Hmm. Make sure you have all the dull colors. And make sure you cover <laughs> everything from top to bottom. Hmm. And just look like an old woman. Or oh, an old man. An old man. Hmm. Uh, Christians don't dress like this. They don't dress like that. And they have made that person to lose his or her personality. That thing was given to him or her by God so that it can be for the kingdom. Mm. So that people can be brought to the kingdom even through that dressing. Oh, yes. But they are cut it up. That no, you must dress like me. You must be like me. This is the best way to dress. Even someone that is a dancer <laughs> that used to dance before and now he's a believer. Mm. The person knows how to dance, but because they have said that uh, when you are that to show that you are holy now, you must stand in one place, be a statue, or just <laughs> dance in a very, very controlled way. Mm. Mm. Shutting down the personality of that person instead of redirecting it. That mm. is stealing that person's personality. Yeah. Everybody has a personality. Oh yes. That God wants to use. Oh yes. Oh yes. But you say no, everybody must be like this. Everybody must be a clone. Mm. 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 Of of somebody else. Mm. I think uh, you know, I can share my own testimony concerning you know how I was once a casualty of what we are discussing. Mm. And I'm sure that you know you two can also relate with it, I mean mm. to it. You know, when I first before I got born again, by God's way, I got born again eventually, you know, uh, in 1980, after answering so many altar calls. <laughs> I got born again finally. Mm -hmm. But before that time, if I hear any music, whether Michael Jackson, whether uh, Sonny Okosun, all this, uh, all this secular music, I would just begin to dance. I could dance. I would dance and dance and dance. So... <laughs> So when I got born again, uh uh, they started teaching us, oh, this worldliness, this worldliness to dance, to express yourself like that. Ah, I just, the thing just died, it was as if the thing just went low inside of me. So I stopped dancing, go to church, sit down, mm -hmm. clap your hands, praise God, and that was it. In fact, that was a time, you know, because I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and that was a time uh, we were having a, a crusade. You know, in the church I was attending then, we were having a crusade, a crusade a, an open hair revival, and I was leading praise and worship. So I was standing like a statue, as my wife mentioned. <laughs> Just standing like a statue. 
<laughs> so somebody sent a note to me and said, Ah, brother Sam, uh -uh, please, please dance a little. <laughs> Say, brother Sam, please dance a little. Mm. I'm talking of around, you know, in the 80s. Dance a little. So I tried to dance a little. But thanks be to God, when I got to Unilag, mm. you know, I started reading the Bible, I started going through scriptures. That's why that uh -uh. David was a mighty man of God. Mm. David was a king. Mm. He was a prophet. Mm. Bible says he danced before God with all his might. Mm. Uh -uh. <laughs> okay, mm. okay. So David became, you know, one of my heroes, mm. like a mentor. When I saw, I read through, through the scripture, I saw the way David, and Bible says he was a man after the heart of God. Mm. So he danced with all his might. Mm. In fact, David was so wealthy that in his trouble, he said he might trouble, <laughs> in his trouble, mm. he provided abundance of gold that is worth billions of dollars into this currency for the building of the house of God before he died. Mm. So I began, you know, I began, I began to study David's life that despite his kingship, his royalty, he could dance before God. I said, wow. And then I better, you know, you know I was able to dance before God. At least dance before God and appreciate what he has done in my life. Mm. I was heading towards hell and he saved my soul. Mm. I, was, I was nobody and he picked me up. So I began to renew my mind. Mm. So the gift that God gave to me, you know, the grace to dance, the help to dance, I began to revive it mm. <laughs> by his grace. Then secondly, too, I read a book titled um, Understanding the Anointing by Kenneth Hagin of Blessed Memory. Kenneth Hagin, you know, Kenneth Hagin happens, to be, happens to be one of the leaders in the U.S., you know, uh, the faith movement. Kenneth Hagin, a book titled Understanding the Anointing. And in that book, he explained that there was a man of God. Do you know what he, do you know what he would do? He would just dance mm. in a program. After dancing, he will make altar calls. And look at, people will be coming to mm. give their life to Jesus Christ just by this man, just by seeing this man dancing. Mm. I said, wow, this dance must not die. Mm. <laughs> this grace to dance must not die. Mm. And that was how God kindled the fire in my life. And... I began to express my almost dead ability. Mm. Express that in dance. Mm. And people have been touched. Mm. In Nigeria, people have been touched. In the Middle East, people have been touched. In the state, people have been touched. Just by seeing me praising God, expressing myself before the Lord. Mm. In fact, apart from people being touched, I am being touched. Why? I am expressing the grace mm. that God has given to me. Mm. Thank God I didn't allow, you know, thank God I didn't allow the grace to, to dance to die mm. by people teaching me that, you know, it's, it's holiness dancing before the Lord. Oh, you are laughing. <laughs> it, it was a resurrection. <laughs> so, so my died. dancing ability died. resurrected. <laughs> <laughs> so you are watching, you know, you may have some things too in your life that. Mm -hmm. That some some people they they were once actors and actresses, mm. but when they now got born again, mm. the ability to to act mm. was stolen from them because mm. because you know because they were taught that that was not mm. the right way mm. that you know once you are born again you must be a pastor. Mm. Mm. Meanwhile, you are called to be an actor. Mm. Once you are born again, you know you must be you know you know you must be a bishop. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. you are you know you are called to work in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Once you are born again, you must be this, you must be that. Mm -hmm. We are not all called into the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe as a as an apostle, as uh, you know, as a prophet, as a pastor, evangelist, or a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not be in either of all this, mm -hmm. but there is a place for you mm -hmm. in the body of Christ so that you can express your personality yes. and be a blessing. To the mm. body of Christ. Yes. So this is my story. Mm. <laughs> this is my song. Mm. Thank God, this is my story. Mm. That the Lord set me free. Mm. 
having studied David, you know, David's life, his mm. lifestyle, mm. I was challenged. Mm. And I also knew that God loves us when we praise him, mm. express him, you know, in dance, mm. as, you, know, uh, you know, praise him in dance, praise him in, you know, Psalm 150, mm. praise him in instruments of music, mm. praise him, praise him, praise him. Mm. When you praise him, he's happy. Mm. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. that is um, what rescued my life. Mm -hmm. I think you've been blessed with that, you know, with my brief testimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the personality can be stolen. Mm -hmm. And so, that person becomes someone that he's not mm -hmm. all in the name of um, believing Christ. Some people, what they do naturally is they smile. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They just smile and people are attracted to them. Mm. And through that, people can even, you can even preach the gospel to them. Mm. But if you are taught, ah, don't smile like that. You, you, you are a Christian, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you have to go and learn how to look very serious. Very serious because mm. Christians are not supposed to be smiling. Mm. And then that person dies. That personality dies. Hmm. And it leaves that personality and takes on somebody else's personality that this is how they said I should look. Hmm. This is how they said I need to comport myself. Hmm. This is hmm. how they said my face should look. Wow. And then people, because of that, they are unfulfilled. Uh. Because they are not who, they are not allowed to be who they are supposed to be. So people are wounded. But what did Paul himself say? What did he do? Mm. He said he became a, he became all things for all men. Mm. God wants to use you even as you are oh, yes. with that personality that you have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why Paul himself in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto mm -hmm. all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law, oh, yes. that I might gain them that are under the law mm. to them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Mm. To the weak I became as weak, mm. that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, Hmm. That I might by all means save hmm. some. Yeah. That was Paul. God wants to use us even with those personalities hmm. that he has given unto us. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe they just need to be redirected in one way or the other. But not to be thrown away. Hmm. So that people can be saved. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Because people have had testimony before of whereby somebody was saying that ah, that is your dressing mm. that attracted me to you. And through that, that person became saved. Mm. Mm. I've heard of that kind of testimony before. Mm. 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 Because that person dressed in an unusual way. Mm. 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 And it wasn't common then for mm. people to dress um, so elegantly. Mm. 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 And that's what attracted mm. that person mm. to Christ at mm. the end of the day. Mm. So God uses different personalities. We shouldn't give people a personality that is not theirs. Mm. I say that this is the personality mm. that you are supposed to display. Mm. God has given every one of us a personality. And no two are the same. Oh, yes. Hmm. You know, what came to mind as, as, we are, as, as we are talking is, is that... Some people, you see them, before they became believers in Jesus mm. Christ, they used to be aggressive, they used to be <coughs> aggressive yes. and angry, and they abuse people, you know, with their mm. anger, they are very aggressive, they are very angry, mm. you, know, they, you know, they cannot afford to see bad things happen, you see them, mm. they are not happy, you see them very, very angry, at, and when they now get born again, mm. so they now told them, look, you must be gentle, oh. <laughs> And uh, you know they define their gentleness. Mm. Just be gentle. Don't be angry at all. Mm -hmm. Don't be don't be angry. Meanwhile, that anger will mm. have been channeled towards warfare. Mm. Towards warfare. The devil, the person who was who was once angry like mm. that, 
when he gets born again, mm. that anger can be channeled towards taking authority over the devil and his, you know, and the power of darkness. Oh, even against injustice too. Uh -huh. Injustice even, in the world. Okay, injustice. You know that that person cannot stand injustice. Mm. So, the 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 nature of that person, you know, outside Christ, mm. now in Christ can be redirected. Mm. Redirected. Mm. So that is a very powerful insight there for us. Don't let anybody steal your mm. nature. Mm. Mm. Be be yourself. Mm. They will say, "Come to Christ as you are." You know, people. You, know, you see leaders <laughs> say, "Come to Christ as you are." But once you get into Christ, they will be, they, they begin to teach you to become who you are not. Mm. What makes somebody who is very lively? Even as a sinner going to hell, the guy was very lively. Mm. <laughs> as a sinner going to hell, he or she was once lively. Mm. Now, after getting born again, now he or she is sure of heaven now. Mm. He, has, he or she has become a sorry case. Mm. Because anywhere he or she gets to, in fact, he contaminates those places mm. with sadness and lack of joy. Mm. That's not God's plan for our lives. Mm. If we, we are jovial and lively outside Christ. We should be more lively in Christ. Mm. Because that is where hope is. Mm. Not mon in money. Not in money. Not in money. That is where hope is. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but some people can say that in Christ that you are supposed to be a new creature. Oh, yes. That all things have passed away. That behold, okay. all things have become new. But what is born again? Is it not our spirit? Man, oh, yes. That oh, is yes. Born again? Mm. And so, whatever is in our spirit now has to be in our soul. Mm. That means there should be a transformation mm -hmm. going on in our soul. Be not conformed to this world, but mm. be transformed. But there are some things that God has made us mm. 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 that were formerly, maybe the corrupted form mm -hmm. oh, was yeah. in the soul mm. before. So by the time you are born again now, it can redirect you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. concerning because definitely those things were showing even before you became born again. Oh, yes. Those things were showing even before you became born again, but a crop, maybe a corrupted version, sort of, okay. Okay. because of sin that mm -hmm. came into the world. So a corrupted version mm. of that soul, but that personality was there. Mm. 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 So the personality has to be renewed now. Yes. There must be a renewal of personality. Yes. So that, even in my own case, the dancing became godly dance. Mm. <laughs> godly dance. I mean, mm. you don't just begin to dance anyhow to, I mean, to cause people to lose their, lose their face, lose their eyes, lose their hearts. <laughs> There's something like that. Lose their face, lose their eyes because you are dancing. But, but at least you don't kill the dance. You don't kill the dancing ability. Mm, the ability to dance. <laughs> I mean, to dance. Uh -huh. So, what is your ability that you have? Mm. You know that that is in you. You know you can. I mean, some people you can see that they can sit down in a place for for two hours, and you won't know that they are, they are there. Mm. They can sit down and be writing. They are very good at writing. Mm. The some and some they cannot sit down in a place. You know they just move about, move about, move about, move about. Move about. <laughs> it's possible mm. people like that can become an evangelist. It depends. Mm. So personalities are there it should be renewed mm. and it should not be killed mm. it should be applied and redirected mm. we appreciate those who are joining us mm. uh, Braoko, sister yo uh, sister okay yeah we appreciate all of you that are joining us god bless you in jesus name mm. yeah you can see some few names on the on the screen mm. hallelujah mm. Mm. yes as we said earlier we are still talking about the good samaritan here we have said that the wine in our time, the wine and the oil mm. is a type for the Holy Spirit today. Oh, yes. Why do we say that? Let's look at some scriptures. Acts. Acts. Okay. Acts 2. Yeah. 1 to 4. four. Yeah. It talks about um, uh, when the disciples were baptized in the Holy Spirit on the, on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, 1 to 4. Yeah. Yeah, whereby the men were saying that they are filled with with new wine. That's mm -hmm. why they are speaking like this. Oh, yes. That's why they are speaking these 
new tongues. Mm. But have we ever seen a place where people that are drunk, they start speaking another language fluently? <laughs> 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 but that's what they said. New wine. They had no clue what they were talking about. But that was really the new wine mm. that had been promised. Mm. If we look at John 2, 1 to 11, the marriage of Canaan also, yeah. where Jesus Christ, he poured, he told them to fill up the um, the earthen vessels with water. And he turned those, those um, earthen vessel wa water pots into wine. The wine, yeah. And they took the wine to the best man, or who was it? The, the, chair, governor, the, the governor, governor of the, the feast. Of the feast, yeah. And he was appreciative of it. That is the best wine. That why did they keep the best wine until now? That is a type for us. Mm. We are also earthen vessels mm. today, and Jesus Christ is the one that has poured into us His wine. Mm. That is the Holy Spirit. And that's why we have 2 Corinthians 4, 7 also, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. Hmm. And then that's why we also have Jesus Christ saying that he was anointed. Are we reading any of this? Or we just yeah. yeah, we can read the uh, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. And then look for 16 to 21. Isaiah, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, and look for 16 to 21. We can even read Luke 4 alone. Okay, yeah, let's, let's see Luke 4. Yeah, because that because that repeats um, what's in Isaiah. Luke 4, 16 to 21. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he came to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Mm -hmm. mm. So there we are able to see the oil. Mm. And even the popular verse that we like quoting, many of us, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed anointed him with what with the holy ghost and with power mm. so he was anointed so that's the oil there again a mention of the oil that is the holy spirit and there's also the mention of ephesians 5 18 that talks about be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but what should we do but be filled be drunk with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Mm. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there we are able to see okay. there that the Holy Ghost, they said instead of being filled with wine, instead of being drunk with wine, that we should be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Mm. So that's the wine. The Holy Ghost is the wine. You wanted to say something? Yeah. You know, when we read Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verse um, 21, it says, And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The Holy Ghost said, There is a promise that God has given to somebody 
long time ago. Mm. It's about you know maybe about about ten years ago, he gave you a promise, and the promise has been lingering. The promise you have not seen the promise fulfilled, and it's as if you have given up mm. over that promise. You have to say this day is that promise fulfilled Amen. in your life. Amen. I see the promise fulfilled in your life this day. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This account that we read, the promise Isaiah took maybe took about maybe about you know over over four hundred years, four dec I mean four centuries. God promised that in Isaiah in, Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah sixty one. Mm. But the word came to pass. Jesus Christ, he said, this day is this scripture, this promise fulfilled. Mm. So, your day is now. My day is now. Amen. Begin to arise and shine. Amen. Because your light is come. Amen. This day is the scripture fulfilled. That's what somebody. Amen. I claim that. Amen. I believe that. Amen. In the name I'm of Jesus. I'm claiming it by saying Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I claim that. <laughs> Amen. Mm. So we are going to the next one again. Still talking about Jesus Christ and the issue of wine. We know that he used um, wine again as an illustration in John 15, 1 to 11, where he talked about him being the vine mm -hmm. and we the branches. Oh, yes. So we are opening to that place now. John 15. So vine is where we get the wine from, the grapes that are turned into wine. Mm, okay. So he used the vine also to uh, an illustration. Okay. And let me read from the Confessional Prayer Bible. John 15 from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser or the husband man. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Verse 6. And number 6 says, If a man abides not in me, he is cast, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. In this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and, I, and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Amen. Amen. So here again, Jesus Christ took the vine, which means that he took the grapes, as his illustration again, mm. that he is the vine and that we are the branches. We are connected to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, you become connected to him as a branch and we're expected to bring forth fruit. Mm. We are connected to the vine. It's when we are not connected to the vine, that's when we break our connection. Mm. When we are not connected to the vine, when you are born again, you have become connected to the vine. Mm. But even the words also, because we are abiding in him, and how do we know that we are abiding in Christ? When we have his spirit, that means that we are abiding in Christ. Mm. 
Because the Bible even tells us in 1 John 4.13, 1 John 3.24 also, that how do we know that Christ abides in us mm. by his spirit that he has given unto us? That's oh, what yes. the Bible tells us. So when we have the Holy Ghost, that means that we have Jesus Christ abiding in us. Mm. But we need to also have the word. We have to take nutrients from that vine. Mm from Jesus Christ and how do how do we do that even by the Holy Spirit he's our connectivity mm. he's the one that brings about a relationship between the vine and the branches oh, yes. without that we cannot bring forth fruit absolutely without him we can do nothing mm. some people can say that they are doing something and that is evidence but it's not so what they are bringing out can be fake fruit Hmm. What they can be bringing out is something that God has not sent them to do. And the fruit that we are talking about, we can be talking about the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Hmm. And we can also be talking about the good works that God has ordained for us to do. Hmm. If God has ordained you to be maybe an engineer now and you go and become a doctor, and you are definitely you are doing good works, but you won't be, you can say that you are fruitful, but not in what God has called you to do. Mm. That's just an illustration there. Mm. So we are supposed to abide in that relationship. It's a relationship between the vine and the branches. And that relationship is through the Holy Ghost. That's why we have scriptures like Romans 8, 14 to 15. Yeah. We read yeah, I can just read, yeah. Mm. Relationship, Relationship between the branch or the branches and the vine. Mm. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. Mm. So we've been adopted yes. into Christ mm. by the Spirit of God. Yes, mm. yes, that's our connectivity to the Father. Okay, It's by the Spirit of God that is also called the Spirit of Christ. Mm. So that's our connectivity. We are being adopted mm. into the family of God. That means that we have been given the full rights, full rights of a son. Mm. When we talk about adoption according to the Jewish Jewish tradition, it means that you have become a full-fledged family member. That all mm. the rights that belong to any other family member also belongs to you. Wow. Wow. Galatians 4. So all that God, all that God has belong to you. All yes. things, all things are yours. Mm. Wow. Mm. And how can we even know that those things, how can we know the, those things that are given to us of God? It's by His Spirit too. Mm, that mm. we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, mm. that we have not received the spirit of fear, uh, we have not received the spirit of the world. Mm. Mm, mm. But we have received the spirit so that we can know those things that are freely given Bring unto us of God. Mm. He's the one that freely shows us those things. He's the one that reveals the deep and secret things unto us mm, mm. through the relationship that we have mm. with him. Mm. And those things are revealed to us as we spend time in the world, yes. you know, in the word of God. You know, he shows us what belongs to us. He can even give us dreams. Mm. He can bring thoughts to our mind. Mm. He, can, he can give you thoughts that will not leave you mm. anywhere you go. On that particular promise, mm. the thought is always following you, whether you bind and you cast it out, the thought will not leave. That can be an indicator that God is revealing to you His promise, what He has in store for you, mm. Mm. and those revelations they are freely given to us. Yes, we don't buy them, mm. we don't sow, sow, sow into them. They are freely, if you are a child of God. Mm. You have been adopted into God's house, God's family. And all that God has 
belong to you. Isn't that isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. And all that God, all that God have belong to me, mm -hmm. belong to you. Mm -hmm. You are a child of God. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of you seeing what he has prepared for you, what he has, you know, what he has made available for you, mm -hmm. and begin to walk towards it and mm -hmm. claiming it. What trusting God for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I has not seen or okay. ear heard, neither and neither entered into the heart of men mm -hmm. that God has prepared, prepared for us. Those things are revealed unto us by his spirit. I was trying to quote his scripture here okay. um, before. First Corinthians two verse twelve. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know those things that are freely given to, to us, us of God. Mm. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Mm. So the connectivity, the connection, the relationship. Galatians 4, verse... That's verses um, 4, verses 5 to 7. Galatians 4, 5 to 5 7. To, 7. To, mm. to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son mm. into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a, a servant, servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Wow. Can you see? An heir of God. Through Christ. Yes. So the spirit of connection. That's why we have um Second Corinthians thirteen fourteen. Okay. That all the grace that we normally talk about mm -hmm. and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit. Mm. That's our connectivity. That's our relationship with God, mm. with Jesus, with God. Is through the Holy Ghost. Mm. So we have to be connected. It's not enough to say that we are born again and you just leave it like that. There mm. has to be a connection. Mm. Which is abiding in his word. Studying the word of God. Praying also. Communing with the Holy Ghost. Mm. 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 Praying in the Spirit. Mm. <laughs> so that the nutrients that are in Christ can flow into our lives so that we can grow, so that we can bear the fruit that we are supposed to bear. The fruit of the Spirit as well as whatever God has ordained for us to, to bring forth. You know, interestingly, the branch and the vine, they have one connection. There was a Direct connection between the vine and the branch. There was no in, there was no intermediary between mm. the branch and the vine. Mm. So when we say spend time in the world, it's not it's not what somebody spend time in the world for you. Mm. I'm talking of the time you personally spend in the word of God. Personally spend mm. the time personal time with the Lord. It can be in the morning. It can be in the afternoon. It can be in the evening. It can be, it can be, it can be any time of the day, but personal time with the Lord. Personal fellowship. Yeah, personal fellowship. That's what I'm talking about here. Mm. Then talk of prayers, spending time to pray, personal time of prayers. That is why, as a believer, we should take advantage of the Spirit of God. You know, God has given us this, the Holy Spirit. If you are, if you are watching and you have not been, you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit as a child of God, it is your right. To receive the Holy Spirit. As a child of God, ask you will receive. Mm. So when you are a believer and you ask for the Holy Spirit and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, mm. it gives you the ability, ability to pray in the to pray in tongues, to pray in the spirit. Mm. You keep praying the spirit regularly. Spend good time praying the spirit. You'll be amazed how your life will change, how your mm. life will be transformed. Mm. You know, when you pray in the spirit, you don't miss it. Mm. When you pray in our understanding, we know you pray in English or in our local language, we can we can make mistakes. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, mm. you don't you don't make mistake at all. You don't make mistake because perfect. you know you are praying perfect prayers unto the Lord. So it should be personal relationship in the word and 
also praying in the, in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Those two combined, we can't miss it. Mm. Can't miss it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So mm. let's look at the primary purpose of the vine. Okay. In Judges 9, 12 to 13. Okay. Add it from here. Primary purpose of the vine. Judges 9, 12 to 13. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come you and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which shares God and man, mm. and go to be promoted over the trees? Should I leave my wine, mm. which shares God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Mm. Mm. You are looking at the primary purpose of the vine, which has already been stated there, mm. to bring joy to God as well as to man. Mm. How can you bring joy to God? Because our fruit, that means that we are supposed to be bearing grapes, mm. which becomes wine. Mm. So how can we bring joy to God? Mm. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks, oh, yes. that's one way. Another one is that when you go and do what God has proposed for you to do, mm. when you are doing your assignment, mm. what God has called you to do also, mm. you bring joy to God. You are being a vine mm. that is bearing forth fruit. Mm. It's not only when you go to church and you are praising God that that's the only time mm. that you, you bring joy to God. And that... Uh, is by praising God. That's the food that he eats and that's it. Mm. No. Mm. That's not the only thing. Mm. When you are fulfilling your assignment, what God has called you to do, mm. you bring joy mm. to mm. our Father that mm. that's my daughter. Mm. That's my son. He's doing what I called him to do. You are bringing joy to him. Mm. Mm. And then when you bring products into the society also mm. and you bring joy to people you make life easier for people mm. even apart from the fruit of the spirit when you maybe heal god uses you to heal somebody and the person is full of joy mm. the gifts of the spirit yeah mm. there is joy there is peace you have prayed for someone that person has peace Answers come and the person is filled with joy. Mm. You are bringing joy to humanity. Mm. Mm. And we can see examples of that in the scriptures. Mm. If we look at Philip in Samaria. Mm. Are we reading that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Acts chapter 8, verse 4 to 8. Bringing joy to the people. Bringing joy to God. Mm. Acts chapter 8. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I read from here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Four. Yeah, from verse four. Ask it from verse four. Therefore, they that we are scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Mm. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spoke. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were paralyzed, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Wow. There was great joy. There was great joy. In that so that's city. the wine being made manifest, being made available mm. to people there. And even if we look at Acts, the same Acts 10, 38, mm. that says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, mm. who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. What do you think was happening to them as they were delivered, as mm. they were set free? They were filled with joy. Mm. So the wine of the Holy Ghost was being made manifest. Mm. People were rejoicing. Mm. Not mm. only because... not. Uh, it wasn't a case of um, 
maybe just be rejoicing. Your miracle has happened, Thank and you, in, in the next 20 years, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. still hasn't mm. arrived. Mm. But mm. these people, they could see miracles, instant miracles Thank happening, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. and they were filled with joy. Many that were possessed were delivered, mm. and they were filled with joy. The captives were made free, mm. were set free, mm. Mm. and they were filled with joy. They experienced the wine of the Holy Ghost mm. through Philip. Mm. 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 And, there's if, someone that, yeah, and there's someone watching too. You too, you are thinking, Lord, I want to experience the joy of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, where Philip went, mm. those that you are lame, mm. they were stagnant. Mm. They, you know, they couldn't move. Mm. Bible says, when mm. Philip ministered to them, mm. the lame were healed, mm. which means stagnation was over. Oh, yes. There was joy. Joy replaced sadness. Mm. As you are watching and you are stagnant, we decree that your days of stagnations are over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm. We decree that your days of just being on the same spot Mark, you know, marking time. Mm. Those days are over in the name of Jesus because Amen. God has come to lift you up. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a great joy. Amen. That's Amen. Which is joy, which mm. is wine, the wine of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Being released that people were able to experience joy mm. because miracles were happening. People that were oppressed were made to go free. Thank you, Lord. Even the eunuch also rejoiced in Acts, the same Acts 8, 39. Mm. Why was he rejoicing? Because before Philip met him, he was reading the scriptures and he didn't understand what he was reading. Mm. And then Philip met him. We know the story of how he met him. He came to him. Do you understand what you are reading? He said, no, I don't understand it. Okay, let me come up and help you to understand mm. and through that he was saved he was baptized mm. before the spirit caught up philip and took him away from there so we are told in 39 8 39 and when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the lord caught away philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing it wasn't the ordinary rejoicing, the mm. rejoicing of the Holy Ghost, because he has finally found what he was looking for. Mm. Thank you. So he experienced the joy. He experienced the wine of the Holy Ghost there. So whether we are in, the, in our assignment, which can be in the marketplace or in any assembly, we are supposed to manifest joy. We are supposed to give joy. We are supposed to bring joy to humanity, humanity mm. wherever we are or wherever we find ourselves. We are supposed to bring forth, cause people to experience joy, mm. cause people to experience the joy of the Holy Ghost, mm. which is deliverance. Oh, yes. When they are delivered, they will rejoice and want to even know more Some in some cases. Mm. Mm. Actually, when you are talking, what came to mind was that when Adam and Eve fell, mm. the devil took over. He took over humanity, you know, humanity, you know, he polluted the world with sadness, mm. with sadness, with lack of joy. Mm. But as a believer, we mm. are the light. Mm. We should now begin to change the atmosphere, mm. bring joy mm. to wherever the mm. enemy mm. has caused men to bow mm. down their heads in mm. sorrow. Mm. Isn't that mm. awesome? Mm. The devil, because anyone outside Christ, that person, you know, he can be pretending or she can be pretending that, that, that I'm happy, I'm joyful, but that person, there are, you know, there are fears in that person. Mm. But, you know, there are sadness, you know, in that person. And that person is hopeless. You know, he doesn't know, there's one thing to have sadness and to, ha and, and to know how to get rid of the sadness. But these people, they are sad and they don't even have solution, you know, to their sadness. Mm. But when you are a child of God and you come with joy, the hopeless, they receive hope. Mm. The sad, they become joyful. That's what God expects us, to, you know, to do to carry mm. that joy. To change the atmosphere. Oh yes, 
change the atmosphere. Mm. That people will even want to be around you. Ah, this person, <laughs> even if they don't believe what you believe, believe. Oh yeah. That oh, this is contagious. That mm. I always want to be around this person because of the joy that is radiating from this person. Oh yes. That's what should be the order of the day. Mm. And mm. even when the Bible says that we are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill, hill that cannot be hid. That we are supposed to let our light so shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify. Even they themselves will glorify our Father mm. that is in heaven. And how can we do that? This is a digression. When we talk about us being the light of the world. The light of the word. Mm. When we have the light of the word, we take it from the invisible realm. That light, whatever revelation that God has given unto us, we take it from the spirit, a spiritual substance. Mm. So we are taking it from the spirit realm. Mm. And we make it visible. We bring it from the invisible and we make it visible mm. so that men can see those good works. Mm. God has already revealed them or is revealing them unto us by his spirit. So those things are in, still in the spirit realm. Mm. But we are supposed to make them come into the physical realm. Oh, yes. So that people can see, even those that cannot see the spirit realm, they can see it physically, tangibly, and they will glorify our Father in heaven. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, let's continue. <laughs> so, why are we still commanded to be joyful or rejoice since we are naturally connected to the vine? Mm. To the source of joy or joyfulness or cheerfulness. Why are we commanded? Because naturally, if we are connected, then that means that joy should be radiating from mm. us. Even naturally, mm. we don't even need to do anything. Mm. So why are we still commanded? You know that even Paul said it. Rejoice in the Lord God always. And again, I say rejoice. Mm. Even despite everything he was going through, he was still saying that. Mm. Rejoice evermore. Mm. Be cheerful. Jesus Christ himself even said it, cheerful. Mm. Mm. That's because in our journey of life, we will go through trials. Mm. We will go through persecutions. Mm. It's part of the package. And <laughs> those things are there for the enemy to use them to steal our joy. Mm. He knows that we have joy. And he knows that if we don't know what we need to know, mm. then he can steal our joy. Oh, yes. But we are looking at some of these scriptures that tells us that it's part of the package. In our journey of life, there are trials, there are persecutions. Mm. They are not something that you can pray Pray of a uh, pray with <laughs> that. No, I don't want any suffering. Oh, mm. ah, no, along my mm. I'm going. <laughs> God, God, God yeah, forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Ah, no. Hmm. When is there in scriptures? We can't remove them. Mm. We can't remove them. And those that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Mm. That's one. Okay. Let's look at some other scriptures. Mm, yeah. Are you looking at? Yeah, yeah. John 16, John 16, 33 says, John 16, 33 says that in this world, we will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Mm. Why? Because I, Jesus Christ, you know, I, the Lord, I have overcome the world. So the Lord says, in this world, you are going to have trouble times. It's possible you are, you know, you experience troubles, mm. but because you are a carrier of joy, be cheerful, mm. be joyful. Mm. Tap into who you are mm. when you are facing tribulations. Mm. 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 That I am a branch and I am connected to the vine. Oh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> then when I experience trouble or tribulations, I must not lose my identity. Mm. I must hold on to who I am in Christ. Mm. I am a carrier of joy. Mm. Therefore, be cheerful. Mm. Because Jesus mm. has overcome the world mm. and all his troubles. Isn't that awesome? 
and we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And he has already won the victory for us. Oh, yes. If we know that it's from that standpoint, that he has already won the victory, uh -huh. and we are in Christ. Oh, yes. Who is he that overcometh the world? But mm. he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Oh, yes. And what is this victory that overcometh the world? Even our faith. Mm. 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 Who are those that will overcome? Those that believe. Oh, he yes. has already fought the battle for us, and mm. he has won. Oh, so yes. it's from that standpoint that we are supposed to stand against the enemy mm. because he has already been defeated and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above all principalities and powers and every name that is named oh, because yes. we are in Christ we are from so from that position mm. we are supposed to be against the enemy oh, that yes. is below us mm. that's the positioning that's the mm. place of authority that oh, yes. we are supposed to be reigning from. Mm. If we can only remember that we are above the enemy, mm. we are above the devil, because we are in Christ Jesus and we are seated above them. Oh, yes. So that's the authority level there. We are above the enemy that is below us because we are in Christ. Mm. And who is he that overcometh the world? He that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm. Mm. Let's continue. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark, Mark 10. Yeah, Mark 10. Uh, okay, okay, okay. John 14, verse 1 says. Okay, okay, okay. Go, 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 on, go on, sweet. Go on, sweet. Let not your heart be troubled. Uh -huh. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Mm. That's for us. Do you believe in Christ? Ah, that's it. Hmm. Believe in Christ. Believe also in me. Don't be troubled. You are connected to to God. You are connected to Christ. Mm. You are connected. We are in Christ. We are hidden in Christ. Our lives are hidden with God in Christ. Mm. And you are the one that will not allow your heart to be troubled. Mm. It says, let not. Yeah. Which means he has given you the power to control your heart from being troubled. Mm. So when they want to sow trouble into your heart, mm. you have to say, no, enemy, excuse me, I won't allow my heart to be troubled. Mm. I will not allow my heart to be all over the place. Mm. Because once the heart is troubled, mm. other things will be you know, other things will be attracted. Mm. You know, there will be different suggestions of the enemy coming to the heart. Once the heart is troubled, then those things will be gaining ground. Mm. But the Lord is saying, don't let your heart be trouble don't allow it mm. so how can we do that practically okay practically Very practical okay way. yeah for example let's say you are facing a health challenge mm. and the enemy is bringing different suggestions that mm. i look at this uh, health problem you know it kills somebody in mm. the u.s mm. it kills somebody in uh, nigeria and somebody in ghana and look at and you are going through the same thing mm. it those things are coming that and that's uh, and that's attack on the mind mm. but you have to now say no the bible says no evil shall befall me mm. that, that's psalm 91 mm. and no plague or sickness shall come near my dwelling place mm. i shall not die but live mm. to declare the words of the lord mm. in the land of the living so you begin to replace you begin to replace those suggestions of the enemy with the word of god mm. so you keep on putting that you know so that your heart can be strong and stable mm. so if you get to a point whereby the enemy will just give we say this guy this one is too <laughs> he will live for a season <laughs> yes you know it will live for a season because because he doesn't have time to waste you never have to because after he has tried to cause your heart to be troubled and you, by his grace, you know scriptures to contend with him, mm. with, then he will leave. Mm. And once he has left, you can advance, mm. advance and move, mm. and move on. Uh, but some people will say that um, they have tried all this and that it's not working. Okay. What about when the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence? Okay. Okay. In that, yeah. That's, out that's, of it are the issues of life. Uh -huh. uh, there, there, there comes guarding the heart. Yeah, there comes even guarding what comes to your heart, mm. what you hear. Mm. Uh, Jesus says, "Take heed what you hear. Be 
careful about what you hear. Mm. You know, so mm. just you know, don't just listen to Dick, Harry, James, and John. Mm. Be selective mm. concerning what you hear because what we hear will affect the way your heart will respond mm. when the enemy throws some things at you. For mm. instance, we are having this less talk. By God's grace, we've been sharing God's word. Mm. So as you hear this type of this type of word over and over again, your heart becomes strong. So mm. when the enemy comes at you, only goes to just lift up mm. what you have had mm. against the devil. Mm. Because you have scriptures, because we have listened to faith building words. Mm. Not that you go and sit down before maybe television all day long. Mm. watching negative news, negative things that will not help you. Mm. That will not help when the enemy comes to attack. Mm. In fact, that will even fortify mm -hmm. the attack of the devil. So, guard your heart with all diligence. Mm. Be selective concerning what you listen to mm. and what you don't listen to. Mm. Because if you listen to what is bad, mm. when the enemy comes, you won't have enough strength to withstand his his attacks, mm. but thank God, God even God is God in His mercy He shows up, mm. even when we don't have enough strength. Mm. But as a child of God, it will, God, will just, God will just say because uh, because you have been listening to bad things, so I will just leave you for you to mm. to perish. No, it's our Father. He shows mm. up. However, to make the work to make the work easier, although not so difficult for God, mm. <laughs> to make the work easier for the Holy Ghost, you spend time. Guarding your heart, mm. spend time listening to the right thing. Mm. When the enemy comes against us, mm. the Holy Ghost will now raise up a standard mm. against the enemy. Mm. Yeah, I think that you know, I think yeah, that I think that one has, you know, has, up. yeah, has given us practical example on how, you know, yeah. to stand against. Mm. And I think it also has to do with um, the level of awareness. Okay. When you're able to discern. Or to be aware, okay. really aware of what's coming in and what's going out. Okay, I think that too has something to do with it. Because some of us, we just go through life. It's as if we are some. It's like sleeping, not mm. really aware of what's happening. Mm. So the level of awareness too, and it's even by reading scriptures too, okay. going through the Bible, communing with the Holy Ghost, that mm. you become aware of some things when they are coming. So that we can hmm, say no. Yeah. Say no. Bend them off. Mm. That's not my portion. I don't want that. It is written mm -hmm. of me. Mm. So you just stand. You I mean you stand your ground mm. because you have been fortified. You have you know you have the mm. right the right resource. Mm. Mm. You know to strengthen you, to help you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's continue. Yeah. Have our time. Yeah. Mark ten. Twenty to thirty. It says that, so, Mark 10, 20, 28 to 30 says, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed you. Peter, <laughs> and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house mm. or brothers mm. or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, however, with persecutions. Mm -hmm. And in the world to come, eternal life. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, you know, here, I don't know what you have walked away from. Mm -hmm. Everything you have walked away from because of Jesus Christ and the gospel. There is a program in place mm. to reward you a hundredfold. You are watching, maybe you have walked away from a particular relationship because of Christ and the Gospels. You have lost some business because you will not do what they are doing because mm. of Christ and the Gospels. You have lost some friends mm. because you will not do what they are doing because of Christ and the Gospels. Bible says that you are going to receive a hundredfold reward. Mm. So get ready. Mm. Because your days of reward 
for following Christ is here. He says, if you walk away from anything because of him, in this world, before you leave this world, there will be reward. However, persecutions are part of the package. Mm. You'll be hated, mm. you'll be persecuted. Mm. So, so that when you are facing persecution, you don't, you don't, you don't feel as if it's a strange mm. thing. Mm. I think I was going to uh, okay. think that we okay. should pro- okay. um, not read this one, but I think it's better for us to read. Okay. First Peter 4, 12 to 16 mm-hmm. says, Beloved, think it not strange mm. concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as mm. though some strange thing happened unto mm. you. Mm. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when the when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Mm. If you being reproached, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. Oh yes. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. (laughs) Mm. Mm. Then for those that want to still look at other scriptures, Philippians 1, 29 to 30. I think it's good. That one is profound. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Philippians 1, 29 to 30. Very profound concerning challenges of life. So important. <laughs> mm. Philippians 1, 29 to 30. It says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here to be in me. So part of the package is also suffering for his sake. Mm. I bet, let, let's go along here. It's not, the suffering is not about maybe you are going through sickness. Mm. Say, well, I'm suffering for Christ. That's why I'm sick. No, mm. you take authority over sickness. Mm. You, you, know, you resist sickness with passion. I'm talking of maybe things that you know you are denied of because of your faith in Christ. Maybe maybe a job that that you have been given to you, but you say, well, this one I'm a Christian, I can't do this, mm. and they say, well, we can't hire you, you have mm. to go. Mm. Or they are they are you know they are trying to offer you a particular role, you know, and you are saying, well, this one doesn't agree with my spirit because you are a child of God, and you lost maybe a, a big contract or a, or a job. I mean, sufferings like that mm. because of your faith. Because they say, who are you? Are a Christian? Well, well, here we don't hire Christians. We hire people of, you know, of, of other faith. So, we're talking of that, those, type of, those types of sufferings. Not sickness, not uh, allowing poverty, lack, hardship. Mm. We are not talking of that. I'm talking of <laughs> things, <laughs> all those things like lack, hardship, sickness, demonic oppression. Mm. As a child of God, you must stand your ground and say, my life is not a parking place for sickness. Mm. My husband's life is not a parking space for sickness. My children's life is not a parking space for sickness. Mm. So I take my stand until I see God's glory manifested in my life. Mm. However, if that's not the case and you are suffering because of your faith, that's part of uh, the package. As believers, mm. Mm. okay, we read in Second Corinthians 1 3 and 4. Yeah, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, mm. that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble oh, yes. by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So when we are comforted in our tribulations, we can also now help others that mm. are going through tribulations. Mm. Mm. Can help others. Yes. With the same comfort. That was the time I posted something on uh, 
on uh, on Facebook on the you know we have a Facebook page called the body of Christ on the web and I put there I said every tribulation that we go through and we excel makes us a consultant mm. to those who are going to go through the same thing. Mm. You cannot help people if you have not gone through possibly what they are going through. Oh, you won't by revelation. Except, <laughs> except, except, the God, except God reveals it to you. I mean, shows you what they are going through. However, if you have gone through those pain and you were able to succeed, mm. you'll be amazed how you, you help people. Because you have compassion, you have empathy, mm. you put your yourself in their shoes. Mm. But somebody who has not gone through it can just uh, treat, treat, treat somebody anyhow because he or she has not gone through it. Mm. Yeah. But if you have gone through it, you can help people better. Mm. Mm. So you are consultant. Mm. So I'm watching some consultants here. <laughs> <laughs> what you are going through now mm. is preparing you for I mean, possibly a ministry, mm. a mm. service. There are some mm. people, you know, who we are once, you know, who we are once into maybe drug addiction, and God delivered them. Mm. Their lives, their lives were in a mess before, mm. and God turned their mess to a message, mm. and through that message, they travel around the world today, mm. to making sure that people who are going through similar mm. troubles and tribulations mm. are delivered. Mm. 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 So reasons to rejoice. Yeah. First John. Four, verse 4. Yeah. You have God, little children, and have overcome them. Mm. Because greater is he that is he. in you than he that is in the world. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is a powerful scripture. Mm. Greater is he that is in you mm. than he, that than is in the world. he, the devil and his cohorts, mm. that is in the world. Mm. That you know, someone will say, I feel like putting on my dancing shoes oh. <laughs> and be dancing because greater is he that is in me mm. than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he, the devil, that is in the world. Mm. So rejoice. Mm. Mm. Romans 8. I love that. 35. Wow. I'm glad in my spirit. <laughs> okay. So should I read from here? Romans 8. 8 35 to 38. Uh, okay. And uh, then also. Okay. I think we can start from verse 26. 26 to 28. Okay. Then. Okay. Romans chapter 8 from verse 26. Why we should rejoice. Mm. Okay. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 28. And we know. Wow. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. I think from verse 35 now. 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, 
we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, mm. nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, why we should be bold? Yeah. No one can separate us from the love, love of God. God. Mm. Nothing, those things come to separate us yeah. from the love. But through the help of the Holy Spirit, we will continue. Oh, yes. First, Cor um, first John 5, 4 and 5. Mm. Just to add. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Mm. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Mm. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. So rejoicing came from the wine that mm. we were discussing. Mm. Mm. Wine that rejoices the heart of God as well as the heart of man, mm. humanity. Mm. So as a branch that is connected to the vine, mm. you have the nature of the vine. Mm. I have the nature of the vine. Mm. Don't let people tell you that you know, you know, you know, we are, you know, we are in the flesh. We can be, we can be depressed and be moving around gloomy all the time and be gloomy. You know, we are in the flesh. No, although we are in the flesh, we are also in the spirit, mm. and we are adopted, you know, into the family of God. Mm. Rejoice! In fact, if there's something to rejoice about, Luke ten was it was, was it verse nineteen? Mm. He says, "Don't 20. be." Yeah, verse twenty. He says. Don't be happy because demons demons uh, obeyed you. Mm. You raise the dead. Mm. You know you cast out devils. Mm. You heal the sick. It says rejoice. Why? Because your name is written in heaven. Mm. That was what Christ said. said rejoice if mm. if if all other things mm. are not working for you. Mm. Just one thing. My name is in the book of life. Mm. And that calls for serious celebration. Mm. And they be saying, they be saying, ah, despite all that we have lost, despite what we are going through, you are mm. still you are still rejoicing. Why? Because you know that mm. your name is in the book of life. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Well, we thank God for today for how mm. far He has helped us. Mm. We appreciate those who have joined us, those who will be watching this program later. We give God praise for your lives. The Lord is your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Please pray for us, and we are praying for you yes. that this program will travel all over the world. Please like and share, invite your friends, and leave comments, ask questions. You know, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Go through this um, video again. Sometimes, you know, what we do is that if you are watching a long video, we can watch it 15, 15 minute segments, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and uh, we don't know what is happening. You have finished watching a long video. So, watch it again. Ask questions. You may disagree with us. You know, let's know your viewpoints mm. because we have also come not to only teach, but to also learn. To also learn. So, God bless you for, for coming. We are going to pray briefly. Concerning joy of God in your life. Bible says that Philip got to Samaria mm. because he was he was a branch, because, because he was having the fruit. Mm. The fruit that he was bearing was also wine. Mm. So he went there, he released the wine. The people got drunk in that wine, mm -hmm. and the drunkenness came from what the Holy Ghost did by healing the sick, by you know causing the lame to walk, mm -hmm. by putting new songs in people's mouths. Mm -hmm. So they got drunk. They were Bible says, and there was a great joy in that city. Joy, I believe, joy has great. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we call joy, mm -hmm. ordinary joy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And that's what it's called. And that's what it's called mm. great joy. Mm. So let's get straight as we pray. Great joy. Uh-huh. And that's what it's called exceeding <laughs> great joy. Mm. So let us pray now and ex- and expect an exceeding great joy. An exceeding great joy. In fact, as we are ministering, I was sensing the power of God here that God is doing great things through this broadcast today. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. And we believe Him because mm. for with God, all things are possible. The Lord Christ says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. For with Him, oh. all things are possible. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you mm. for today. We give you praise. As many as have watched this video or that are watching, mm. and they are trusting you that they want their joy to be full in some areas, we mm. decree that from this day, that joy becomes full in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Every area where sadness exists and it has lingered for a long time, we terminate the lingering process now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sickness, bowels condition, blood condition, bones and marrow conditions, we command you depart now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Amen. Thank you. That person in your ear is as if there's white substance coming out from the from your right ears. White substance. God is healing your right ears now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is also I saw a hand like if somebody is holding on to herbs, okay, dried herbs. Maybe somebody there's somebody what is happening to that person, the solution is herbs. Okay. To get herbs mm. Mm. for that sound healing. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Mm. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Uh, we thank God for all God has done. So we want you to uh, go and en- enjoy your weekend. And by the grace of God, we shall meet ag- again uh, next week. Jesus studies in Jesus' name. Amen. So we thank you one more time. Thank you so very much. So have a lovely weekend. You, your family, in Jesus' name. Amen. So bye. Bye.